So this is the boat next to mine, owned by a couple of good guys. Um, it's a Shetland. They're old boats now, most of them, but very capable boats. You pick these up, sometimes quite cheap. Again, go out on them. Um, they can be a little bit of a wet ride, some of these boats. They really can. They can throw water if it's a slightly a slight chop and, and the way the wind's side on. It can throw it over a little bit. Same with, if we go over to the boat, the other side of mine, Predator. Now, a good friend of mine owns this, Dick Stubbs. Excellent fisherman. Place excellent. We know oh. Dick with the place. Yeah, we all want to know Dick. D Dick <laughs> Stubbs, just... legend, legend in this club. Um, but yeah, again, very capable boat. He's done some miles in this uh, V hull. Um, this one, he's got a little plastic screen at the top of there. If you can oh, see, oh yeah, it like from a little here. spray for the sprayer. It just gives him a little bit of protection. Now, what I don't like about these boats, as opposed to my boat or even the Raiders, is you can the Raiders got seats. I don't want seats on my boat. I don't I like us. I, I sit on my uh, tackle box, so I don't. I like to stand up because my knees give me jip. Yeah. Well, no, my back gives me jip. My knees are the suspension for my back. <laughs> right. So I just like to stand up. I was mentioning seats. Now, I don't like them, as I said. The problem with these, this has got seats, it's the seat in position. You're looking through the front windows. You can't see it because he's got a cover on, but you're looking all the way through the front window like that. You want no protection for anything coming over the top here, no protection from the rain. I like a flybridge, I really yeah. do. Part of the reason why I like the Raiders so much. Um, it's just, I feel it's a better position all around the sea, more comfortable, the wind's not in your face. If you've got to stand up in these boats, to see where you're going, then you're getting the elements in your we're, face. We're, we're wet today. I mean, we just come in for fishing. We would have been soaked today. Oh, I like a bit of comfort. I do. I'm getting to the age now where I do like. I don't want to get wet and too cold. It's no fun, is it? Let's face it. Rain started again. Brilliant. But anyway, we'll ignore it. Props. Now, if you look, this one's got a normal. What I'd say most boats have an aluminium prop. It's also got a look a hydrofoil on. So obviously, you know what what that tries to do. I'm guessing is gives you a bit more. Um, oomph and a bit more lift, same as um, uh, the normal ones that they used to screw on to the... Yeah, to could the you call it a Z-wing or something? Z-wing, oh, is that something like probably that? probably had all sorts of names. Personally, I think if it needs that, then there's something a bit amiss with the old configuration <laughs> yeah. or the engine, but I, you know, I, each to their own. But the prop is aluminium, which most people have. This particular boat has a stainless prop. A full spline one, actually, if you look at it. Now, the difference being with the aluminium stainless is there's flex in the aluminium, not so much in the stainless. So the stainless will give you slightly better performance, more grunt, more push. The downside of that, though, is if you hit anything, it won't bend like the aluminium as easily, and it'll send the shock up through your gearbox. You know, um, fine line between what do, you, what do you want. Personally, I like the aluminium ones. If it does hit, it tends to bend. Yeah. Um, I'd rather replace a prop at maybe 150 quid than a gearbox I can maybe, imagine, I can uh, imagine. maybe 1500 quid so yeah that's where we are there if you look around um lots and lots of other boats here i mean eca we've got 750 members uh, this is just one row this is just the first row where we've got a big yard here big footprint um lots and lots of small boats in all sorts of ribs we've got and uh, small fishing boats we've got uh you know boats that people go water skiing on and tow donuts and all sorts so of course you don't have to have a, a 16 17 18 foot boat you can have a smaller one if it's just for harbour use or very nice days just outside the harbour um you can have like a little open dory like this perfectly uh, usable little boats smaller engines i mean this will fly actually without a 25 on the back so uh they're fast aren't they yes yeah. very very much so there's more power there than you think i mean that's uh you know obviously you've got you're more open to the elements it's a smaller boat so you have to be a bit careful on them. You have to be careful on all boats, but particularly careful on the on the smaller ones. And this is a plane because it's got what cathedral hull there. Yes, that's a cathedral hull. There's, as I say, there's all sorts in the yard. You know, we've got um, we've got some. Uh, I mentioned them earlier. I can't recall what what I call parkers. Yeah, a lot of parkers, which um, 
I think that's a Parker there, I want to say, over there, which uh, they use them. They're, they're quite... That, that white one? Yeah, I think that's a Parker. It looks like a Parker to me. There you go. On up to the subject of smaller boats, another one there. This is like a displacement hull. Um, we, they use a lot of these uh, in the harbour. Um, I want to say this looks like a Parker, maybe. Um, again, very, very nice little boats. You know, they... You want to go fishing them? My friend, mate, mine's in the harbour now, actually, still fishing in one. Um, we went past him. And what would you have on that engine wise, Wayne, being it's a displacement? Uh, yeah, you wouldn't want much on it. You really wouldn't. I, I don't know what you get away with a. 10 or something? Yeah, you get away with a 10 on that but all day long. Um, all, easy. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you don't have to have big, big engines. They're quite powerful outboards. You'd be, be surprised with the power of them. So, um, and with a displacement hull, you don't want a big engine. It doesn't go fast. You know, it's a slower hull design. Also, what's becoming more and more popular, these aluminium boats. Um, there's, a, there's a few of them coming over now. Uh, this is, again, is a smaller type, a little Linda. Um, but yeah, they've all got their place. Uh, I've been out on a bigger aluminium boat, and a very nice thing, well, a couple actually, very nice things they were too. So uh, the, the New Zealand uh, fishermen use them a hell of a lot. So if they're built correctly, they're very nice boats. But yeah, they, they've all got their place. I mean, there's some wooden ones in there. It's not just fiberglass. So you've got aluminium, fiberglass, and and three proper... options, three whole material options. I yeah, suppose. some traditional wooden ones in here. I can't see one at the moment, but I know we've got some in here. You oh. can actually, if you've got the money and the space, go up a, a to the next size up. Uh, this is this is a Quicksilver 640 Pilot House. Nice boats, nice, very nice. You've got Arvers. Um, a friend of mine's got the uh, the, the Mary Fisher. Um, they're nice boats, you know, they, they take you to another level of comfort. You've got an enclosed cabin on most of them. You can have cooking facility. Probably a couple of bunks in the front, I imagine, you know, that you could sleep in the front. On, on that one, yeah, no doubt there is. Absolutely no doubt at all. Um, it just depends on what you've really got the, the, the finances for. Clearly, moving that boat and launching that boat yes. will be a lot harder than it will mine. And, you know, and, and this is the thing. I mean, even if I had the money, would I go to something bigger? Yeah. No, I wouldn't. I like what, what I do. What we call in, in those small boats. I like what I do at the moment. I like to be able to say to myself, you know, let's hitch the hitch up to the car, tow it down to Cornwall. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't want to be towing this one for sure. I'm not saying you can't tow it. Of course no, you no, can. you would do with a big unit, wouldn't you? Oh, I can tow my boat with my two litre diesel estate. You'd, you'd struggle with that. Let's face it. That would need something a bit more uh, sure, powerful. Cool. But. Um, but I say each to their own. I mean, uh, we went over onto the pontoon over there, and you look at the next size boats up again. Um, you're talking Rodmans and, and things like that, which are uh, which are in the next level of uh, size and, and, and expense. Yeah. Okay, another little tip. Bung. Okay, there's a hole there in the outboard where the splash well is on the inside. So when it rains, like it did today, the amount of rain we had was biblical. Let's say it was. It could have filled this boat up, and then. Go, start going over the threshold into me cuddy and for me that would be awkward and a pain and get me stuff that's in there is wet if it's on a mooring it could be catastrophic remember that so the bung is important to take that out when it's on a trailer just so is that the, the and it's important to put it back in when you go to sea a lot of people forget also another little thing you see this had some use a bit of algae on it and that lot see the o-ring find out what size it is for this bung buy a packet of them because they can go they perish, do they? Yeah, they do. All rubber perishes after time, over time. Um, and you can just pop a new one on, and that's what creates your seal when you do it up. So, as I say, splash wells down there. This boat, listen, I'm not going to wash it down now. It's going to ram it down with rain in a minute. I'll come down and wash it at a later date. It needs it, but there you go. So the splash well down there, as I mentioned, this boat has two batteries. I would not entertain going to sea in, an, in a boat that didn't have a twin battery set up. It's got the one-two switch there. I'll go out on one, when I'm out there, I'll flick it over to two, I'll come back on two, I'll do the reverse of that the next trip. It keeps those batteries topped up and lovely. Remember to turn it off when you've come in. So once you've trimmed your outboard down and you're ready, make sure you take your keys out, make sure you turn your one, two switch to off. So if there is anything left on, which I'll probably have over there, if I look at my switch panel, I've left a couple of the switches on, it doesn't matter because I've isolated it. But if I hadn't have done that, that might have been drawing power. Next time I come down, flat batteries, no good. So remember to turn that one, two switch, if you have one, when you finish the day, turn it off. And of course, even though it's off, your bilge pump is still going to be located onto the batteries direct. So if it does rain, 
it should pump out automatically if you're on a mooring, would it? Yeah, exactly that. Yeah, people have more float switches, and, and it's vital that they check those float switches very well, make sure they work. It's exactly that. They often use a solar panel as well to just top the batteries up. So if it is out on a mooring, and it hammer, obviously you've got to be bunging if it's on a mooring, if it hammers with rain, as soon as it gets to a certain point, the bilge comes on because it's automatic, obviously, with the float switch, um, and it just bails that boat out because many have sunk. Many have sunk with uh, that haven't you know haven't checked their batteries or haven't checked their their float switch on the bilge pump. Um, so yes, yeah, vital. I mean those batteries are your lifeline. They run your your radio. And your radio is what's going to get you out of trouble if if you get into a situation where you need to call for a mayday. All runs off them batteries. Don't ever be tempted to scrimp and buy cheap ones or have you know, if it drains down and it don't want to charge up properly. But oh, it's still all right. That's folly, that really is. You're out at sea, it goes bad, it goes bad quick, and it can go very bad. So, batteries, for me, I mean, they really are a vital part of the boat, and, and don't scrimp on them. Buy the best ones you can and, and have two, have a backup. So we mentioned bilge pumps a moment ago. Do you know what, a bugbear of mine is when people snip line making traces and they just drop it straight down on the deck. Yeah, I've seen Graham do it, I've seen most of my friends do it. I always say to people, Here's a rubbish bag, put it in there. And I tell you, you might think, oh, it being being picky. No, no, there's a bit of method there in the madness, and that is, where do they think that little bits of line end up? And some of them can be, you might be using like 15 pound line. It's very fine and hard to see on the deck. It all ends up washing down into your splash well. Then should you need that bilge pump, what happens? It will get sucked up into there, tangles up, it doesn't work. And the thing is, when you want that bilge pump to work, it could be emergency situation. So. It's not a little bugbear of mine. It is, but it's not. There's there's a reason for it. It clogs up your bilge pump. Okay, so there's a few little hints and tips. We've shown you a few boats around the yard. We can't show you every boat, of course. The key is, if you want to buy a boat, if you don't know a lot, ask. Go with someone who knows a lot. Go out on the boat. That's the very most important thing ever. Go out on the boat. Um, so there you go. Hopefully we've given you a few little insights about certain types, a few little hints and tips that might help you. Uh, if you want to see any other interesting things, got some good videos on the, the channel on, on Wayne Common angling, some very good underwater footage. Check them out, have a look, see if there's anything there that takes your fancy. Never know, might be something to kill a few hours or a few minutes even of a day, then we've got nothing else to do. Oh yeah, mate, he's coming down there. Not the dinghy, that uh, the white one there. Uh, one in front. Takes me minutes to get mine on, doesn't it? Push him out, yeah. Yeah, yeah, lovely. It's all yours.